when you are asked later in the program. In the four years that we've been on the air, we've been pleased with the opportunity to address numerous issues of concern to Catholics and others of goodwill as well. But there's one issue we've never addressed, our needs. How is it that we're on the air? Who pays the bill? How do we stay on the air? We'd especially like to address the many, many thousands of you who watch this program on a regular basis but have never called. And we'd like to encourage you to consider and reflect about calling today to help us stay on the air. I'm Julius Matona. This is what Catholics believe. We'd like to discuss our needs today. With me from uh, Round Top, New York, is first Father Clarence Kelly, uh, spiritual director of St. Joseph's Novitiate, where there is the congregation, the Daughters of Mary, a congregation of traditional Catholic sisters. Also, we have Father William Jenkins, who is the priest at St. Teresa of the Child Jesus Church in Parham, Ohio. And for the first time to join us in this capacity is Don Julius, who is the Director of Administration and Development of What Catholics Believe. Reverend Fathers, perhaps you could tell our viewers, what are we trying to do? What is the purpose of What Catholics Believe? I think we're trying to uh, shed some light into a world that is filled with darkness. I think as a result of the changes that have taken place in the wake of the Second Vatican Council, that the Catholic Church has been obscured is kind of an eclipse, and that there are people out there, good Catholic people, who are starving to hear the truth. And we hope with the help of God and with their help to proclaim the truth uh, of the Catholic Church throughout the land to as many people as we possibly can to encourage them, to strengthen them, and to bring many people back to the practice of the traditional faith and ultimately to give glory to God and to save, to help save as many souls as we possibly can. Has this been at all successful, Father Jenkins? I realize that in your travels that periodically you're stopped by people who've seen you on television and that people might come in after you say at Mass at one of the missions that you service saying that they came to the program, to the Mass as a result of the program. Has this happened? Yes, it's happened fairly regularly, as a matter of fact. And uh, uh, they're not necessarily all Catholics either. I find quite a few people who, who do stop me and, and look for a moment and say, haven't I seen you on television? <laughs> and uh, I'm very happy that people react that way because, first of all, uh, uh, someone has to be a, a bit of a morning person, I think, to... Uh, to be watching the program and uh... Or a just, very late night person. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they're on the west coast, right? right. And uh... But the fact that they, they watch closely enough to, to remember. Uh, for example, just the other day I was uh, passing through uh, one of the major airports uh, in the backyard of the uh, of the U.S. Congress, in fact, and uh, uh, I had a gentleman stop me and ask me if uh, I could bring for him, the next time I came through the airport, a copy of the message of Our Lady at La Salette. And uh, I did recall, as a matter of fact, one of the few things I did remember. And uh, he was delighted to receive it the next time I went through the airport. What I'd like to encourage all of you to do now, if you can, go to your phones, call our operators. They're waiting to hear from you and make a pledge of financial support so that we may continue broadcasting what Catholics believe. We're going to tell you a little bit about our finances, which we really never do explicitly in a moment. But right now, let me just say this. If you make a $25 contribution, we'll send you as an, a token of appreciation of our, uh, our generosity or your generosity for your support, a re, an issue of the Roman Catholic. If you send a contribution or you make a contribution of $50, we'll send you, in addition to the Roman Catholic, one of the four videotapes you see before you our Patrick Buchanan series, our Joe Scheidler series, our Treatment of the Sacred Heart Devotion, there was three programs, and our Marian Devotion series, there was five programs. For $50, tell our operators which of the four you'd like. For a $100 contribution, we can send you two of any four. And for a $150 contribution, we'll send you the whole set. Finally, if you can pledge support on a regular monthly basis, Please indicate that to our operators because this will really help stabilize our finances. Finally, we'd like to make it as easy as possible for you to help us. We accept Visa or MasterCard. If that's more convenient for you, 
please indicate this to our operators. They're prepared to service that kind of generosity as well. And finally, if you'd like to know where you may attend the traditional Latin Mass, the Mass of all time, our operators can help you as well. Don, we've been talking about our needs. Perhaps you can put a perspective on what it takes to keep what Catholics believe on the air in terms of dollars. As I visit with people from time to time, Julius, they, the, the, the one question that's very common is, is it really as bad as Julius says either on the show or in the letters that they receive? And, of course, I, I chuckle right away. And um, one of the things I bring to their attention, uh, of course, having done the, the tax return for us, uh, the ending cash balances for 1991 and 1992 are all, all, always very revealing. The uh, tax, the cash balance at the end of 1991 was $390.20. The As you can imagine, it costs a lot more each week to keep this going <laughs> yes. than $390. So the it's... ending balance at the end of 1992 was $63.33. The, the positive thing I think we can take heart in is the, the fact that at least we end the year at, at, a, at a positive balance. But uh, the main challenge is that we do run each month a significant deficit that we have to cover. And we try to manipulate things and re rearrange the payments and things to, uh, to keep people happy. But every four to five months, we begin to run into a major crisis crisis where really we begin to look at the possible end of the program and that's where we really have to begin hustling and call some folks and ask for some significant help and thank goodness our Lord and those good folks have seen fit to help us at this point but uh, what little hair is left on top of my head I think I'm going to lose by trying to manage the finances of this program. <laughs> So if, if you want Don not to lose all his hair, please call. Save Don's hair. That's right. That's, uh, Father Jenkins or even Father Kelly, I understand that there have actually been converts to the faith as a result of the program and that you've been involved with the conversions. There have been converts to the Catholic faith and also many cases of people who have uh, given up the practice of the faith but because of the program they return to the Mass and to the sacraments, which is, of course, very, very encouraging. In fact, I would say this. I spoke to a gentleman from Indiana a couple of weeks ago, uh, and, uh, and what he said, of course, you know, perhaps was a little bit of an exaggeration, but he certainly meant it from the bottom of his heart, and he touched my heart when he said it. He said to me that uh, he has started watching the program, and since he did, his faith uh, has come alive. And he actually said this to me. He says, if he saves his soul, he thinks it will be because of the program. Isn't that something? Oh, my goodness. Well, Julius, about five years ago, I had the impression that the faith was all but dead in this country and that there were only a handful of people left who even believed anymore in the Blessed Sacrament and devotion to the Blessed Mother and so on. But uh, this program has brought, uh, has brought a new light on, on, on the existence of the faith in the, in the people. We're getting phone calls from all over the country and letters from all over the country from people in the most, uh, let's say, little-known areas, uh, little-known towns uh, in the Midwest, all the way out to California, and they're, they're calling to tell us, uh, thank goodness we found your program. We, we thought we were all alone. <laughs> there are hundreds, thousands of people out there who were never known of before, who still have the Catholic faith, love it, want to live in it, and want to die in it. You know, Father Jenkins, you just mentioned two things which are very important today, phone calls and letters. We're going to talk about letters in a moment, but we'd like you to make some phone calls right now. Our operators are waiting to take your pledge of financial support to make sure that we can stay on the air. We are in tremendous need of your support. Please call us at 1-800-446-6163. Again, for a pledge of support of $25, we'll send you an issue of the Roman Catholic. For a $50 pledge, we'll send you, as a token of our appreciation, in addition to the Roman Catholic, your choice of one of the four video sets you see before you. Our series with Patrick Buchanan, our series with Joe Scheidler, the well-known pro-life activist, our treatment of the Sacred Heart Devotion, there are three programs of the series, and a five-part series, five programs, one videotape on the Marian Devotion. We talk about Fatima, we talk about Lourdes, La Salette, uh, and we talk about devotion to the Immaculate Heart of Mary and the Blessed Virgin Mary herself. 
Now, if you send a $100 contribution, we'll send you two. You can choose two of the four. And for a $150 contribution, you'll get the entire set. I think you'll really enjoy them, okay? Finally, if you can pledge support on a monthly, regular basis, please indicate that to our operators. They're waiting to hear from you. Please call 1-800-446-6163. And we'd like to make it as easy as possible for you to help us. If you'd like to use, say, Visa or MasterCard, our operators are prepared to take your donation in such a form. Don, we talked about letters. Why don't you tell us about what some people have read, written? Well, the, the interesting thing when you asked me to start trying to put something together as a comprehensive representation of what we're accomplishing, the real measure of what we're doing, uh, I found the real treasury to be the letters that folks do write to us, and uh, enough so that it really touches the heart and uh, makes one cry from time to time when you read these letters. But uh, I've, I've got maybe a half dozen here. I'll just quote to them briefly. But there's a bishop who uh, very much endorses and supports our program. Uh, he wrote to us, you and the priests have succeeded in what is the most difficult of TV programming, the talk show, and that it is centered on what the Catholic Church has always taught and must teach till the end of time makes it something of a miracle of broadcasting. And I think this is a tremendous endorsement by him of what we're trying to do. That's a question we get from folks who call us periodically about what we're, what we're doing. Are, we, is it, are you under a bishop and things like this? It's wonderful to have this kind of endorsement of what we're doing. Uh, a 20-year-old gal who had gone through Catholic schools who wrote to us that, uh, in the sh that she had been watching the program, your program, I have come to the realization that I have not been instructed at all in the teachings of Christ in this church, referring to her school. Thanks to you, I am now receiving the help I need to develop a strong faith in the traditions and beliefs of the true Roman Catholic Church. What's beautiful is not only the Catholic people who call us, but also the folks who are not Catholic, who write and actually are monthly supporters of what we're doing. Uh, here's a lady from College Park, Georgia. I am a born-again lady of 61 years of age. I always look forward to Saturday morning so I can watch you again. I appreciate the fact that your first love is the Lord Jesus. You are loyal to him and his teachings. A lady from Minneapolis wrote to us, I was raised a Baptist, but feel that I am being led to convert to Catholicism and would much appreciate a church in the Minneapolis-St. Paul area that you could direct me towards. Lastly, could you explain to me how the rosary is prayed? This is tremendous to have a, a, a lady who's a fundamentalist calling in and uh, or writing in and saying things like this. Um, other letters that are very similar that we get, uh, this is from um, another caller in Minnesota. Uh, we just saw your TV program January 31st. We really enjoyed the program. We need something like this to get Catholics back to the true faith. Those folks, unsolicited, became $100 a month supporters of, of what we're trying to do with the program. Uh, this might be the gentleman you were referring to, Father Kelly, in Indiana. If my soul is saved, it will be due much to this show. Hmm. An incredible hmm. statement. The, uh, again, the cross-section representation, this letter is from a Jewish gentleman who wrote to us. Though I am Jewish, I watch what Catholics believe every week on BET. I enjoy your discussions and have even sent in contributions. My ancestors are probably convulsing in their graves. So, <laughs> Some uh, of them are rejoicing, though. Oh, yes. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I, I'm sure they are. Uh, and the, the <laughs> offer, they have so many folks that call us for the mass locations when we make that offer for the mass locations. And this is just another one of those beautiful letters. We finally made it home, referring to the faith and the, and the Tridentine right. Mass. We are now attending St. Michael the Archangel Church, and all four of us are happy, and we cannot describe to you the peace of mind and just peace we have all experienced. It's about 150 miles round trip every Sunday for this family to go to Mass, mm -hmm. but they persist. They have the resolve to persist. Mm -hmm. Father Jenkins, I understand that uh, in, in one of the... Uh, churches you service that uh, you've experienced a very significant increase in the number of parishioners since the program uh, became broadcast in that area. Yes, it's true. I think uh, at St. Teresa of the Child Jesus Church in Parma, Ohio, we've seen a, uh, quite a remarkable increase in attendance on Sundays over, over the last uh, couple of years. Mm -hmm. And I do attribute that largely to the presence of the program being broadcast on a local station. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, quite a few of the people have come up to me and introduced themselves and have told me that they found out about St. Teresa's through what Catholics believe. So I'm very grateful for the work that is being done here. I understand that you run into people across the country as well, <clears throat> Father, who will say, I, I saw you and 
So. I do, and uh, what Father Jenkins just said is part of, uh, I think, the long-range desire that we have, which is to make the program available on more stations and at a better time. For example, uh, I know when you always introduce me, Julia, she make reference to the fact that I'm up there in Roundtop, New York, and the people in Oyster Bay, where I'm half the time, say <laughs> to me, why doesn't he ever mention Oyster Bay? <laughs> you know? Uh, but, for example, we would like eventually to have uh, the program on a, uh, a local station, a major uh, local station in the New York area, uh, the Long Island area. I am uh, f uh, half the time at Oyster Bay in Long Island, uh, where I'm in, uh, in charge of the church there. But we would like to get the, the, the program on, uh, on other networks uh, and other times, and as I say, Right now, as we've been talking about it, we'd like to get it on uh, some major station in the New York area because there are literally millions of, uh, of people and Absolutely. literally millions of, uh, of Catholics, nominal Catholics anyway, and many of those people are very sensitive to what has happened and are looking for, you know, a beacon. Uh, and of course, uh, many non-Catholics too, you know. If these changes had never taken place in the church at all, the number of conversions would have been uh, staggering. So we want to get the truth out to the people. We want to represent the true Catholic faith and to perhaps in some way even minimize uh, the damage that is being done to the reputation of the church uh, by some of the things we read about in the newspapers. We need not only your help to stay on the air, we need your help to expand. We certainly should be on in the New York metropolitan area. We should be on in the Hudson Valley area in Albany. We should be everywhere. Look, we're all called to be apostles. Some of us exercise this responsibility in different ways. You can exercise or help exercise your responsibility by calling and making a pledge of financial support. Please call us at 1-800-446-6163. We want to stay on the air. We want to expand. For a contribution of $25, we'll send you a Roman Catholic magazine. For a contribution of $50 as a token of our appreciation for your Father Jenkins. Julius, you know that uh, Father Kelly and I do uh, appreciate this program very much. Uh, both of us travel quite a distance to get here for the, uh, the making of this program. And uh, I just think it would be good for the people to know that the expenses incurred in our travel are very often not reimbursed at all. Or uh, often, if they are, we have to wait a long time for those expenses to be reimbursed. And I mention this uh, just to let them know that uh, we also have a stake in this program. We appreciate it. We do contribute uh, to it in our own way, other than just talking. Um, I consider what Catholics to be, uh, believe to be a kind of a traditional Catholic equivalent of Radio Free Europe. Uh, it's kind of Radio Free Church or Radio Free America. You know, as far as getting the, the traditional doctrines of the Catholic Church out after the, uh, the uh, well, hostile takeover of the, uh, By of, the, of the church institutions right. after Vatican II. I would like to say, too, uh, we don't often talk about uh, the financial side of this. We leave it up to you mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, for a variety of reasons. Uh, but I would like to say that I think there are probably people out there who watch the program, appreciate the program, who are not interested in getting any of the tapes or uh, the magazine or whatever the case may be, but who might be in a position to assist us. There may even be a few people out there who are able to assist us in a very substantial way. And we'd like those people to know that we really do need their help, we really do need their support, and we really appreciate it. And uh, we will certainly uh, remember them in our prayers. And if they're looking for something to do, there may even be, for example, non-Catholics as uh, as Don read some of those letters, there may be some non-Catholics out there who are able to help us out in a very substantial way, who, who think that, uh, you know, that we're riding uh, high and easy here, but the truth of the matter is uh, we're not. We know they hear this all the time, you know, from, from TV programs, uh, the, uh, the, the cry wolf thing, but it really is true uh, in our regard, as uh, Don mentioned, that it's really... Uh, something struggling just to, to get by, and certainly with regard to the future, we do want to have uh, as great an impact as we possibly can and make this available to as many people as we possibly can. And I would make an appeal to those people out there to come to our assistance, 
to contribute to the program, to help us and not only survive, but to grow, to, to grow and to, to secure uh, an effective future with regard to the glory of God and salvation of souls. And in asking that, Father Kelly is asking them to make more work for him, actually, <laughs> because, uh, I mean, uh, we, we do put quite a bit of time oh, into the sure. program, and it's time that uh, would otherwise already be taken for many other things. So uh, he's not asking that selfishly, but rather generously. He's asking... Uh, to make it possible for him to work harder. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we started this program a few years ago, and uh, we started with about one month's revenue. We had a, enough revenue to stay on the air for one month, and that was all. Mm -hmm. We figured we'd see what happened after that July was over. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been going ever since, and I really think it is attributable to the blessing of our Lord, and certainly the intercession of our Blessed Mother. Mm -hmm. Please call us, 1-800-446-6163. You don't have to be a Catholic to support what Catholics believe. Many aren't. We'd like to continue, but we can't do it without your help. In addition, we'd like to expand. Again, we can't do it without your help. Please call us. We'd like to make it as easy as possible for you to help us. If you'd like to call and pledge, we will send you something in the mail, a pledge response form. If you'd like to make an immediate contribution, you can do so utilizing Visa or MasterCard. If you'd like to make a monthly pledge, our operators can help you with that as well. And also, if you'd like to know where you may attend the traditional Latin Mass, the Latin Mass, the Mass of all time, our operators can help you find a location. 1-800-446-6163. We can't continue without your support. Please help us. Don. Well, the, th the thought that I would offer, Julius, is we, we must resolve. There's a difference between giving lip service to things and talking about things and having the resolve in your heart that the faith is going to prevail. The, the martyrs over the centuries have shown us a perfect example of what resolve strengthened from heaven can accomplish. And there's, there's one story uh, that I would just like to relate that comes from the history of our country. The, the, the patriotism demonstrated by this man. When the British moved out of Boston on April 18, 1775 in their trip to uh, Concord, they went through a little town called Monotomy. And in Monotomy was an older gentleman, 85 years old, named Sam Whitmore. And Sam Whitmore, when, he went, when the British went through that morning, he told his wife that he was going to go out and he was going to meet them on their way back. And he got his two pistols out and he got his rifle and he got them all cleaned up. So what was his wife's reaction to that? Well, they don't elaborate in the story, but you can just imagine, you know, the, the, all the arguments, you're too old for this, leave <laughs> it to the younger bucks, and uh, what do you want to get involved for type of a thing. But that 85-year-old gentleman had the resolve that what was right had to be carried forward. And so as the British had their encounters in Lexington and Concord, and of course were on their way back, the, um, Sam had positioned himself about 150 feet, maybe 200 feet off the main path of march. What he didn't anticipate, he figured he'd have some clear shots at him. What he didn't anticipate was the fact the British would put flankers out that day because they had been shot up so badly. And the flanking unit came right in on top of him and he fired with his rifle first and took down one of the British regulars and he fired with two pistols. He took two more down and at that point they, they, they shot him in the face. He fell down and they overran him and they bayoneted him something like 16 times. And believe it or not, he survived. Oh, gosh. And he lived to be like about 102, 103 <laughs> years old. And when asked would he have done things differently, he said, I would still do it the same today. That man demonstrated resolve. And I think that's what we have to demonstrate today to be worthy of our faith, to demonstrate the resolve that the faith is going to prevail. And we must do what is necessary to guarantee that it will prevail. And what's necessary is that you call 1-800-446-6163 right now. Don't put it up with resolve to help us stay on the air. You know, things might not always be as good as they are now, not that they're ideal. We can drive 150 miles to Mass. Who knows, down the future, you may drive 150. 155 miles to mass with Soviet hind helicopters chasing you. Right now we haven't reached such a state. But while we can do something about it, let's do it. Call 1-800-446-6163. Make your pledge to the operators. If you want to make it immediately and respond to the urgency of our needs, we can take Visa or MasterCard. That'll help right away. 1-800-446-6163. Father Kelly, we have time for some closing thoughts. <laughs> well, uh, <clears throat> I wouldn't say that they would be Soviet helicopters, <laughs> but they would be United Nations helicopters. Uh, uh, uh. 
because there is this clear movement to destroy the sovereignty of the United States and to establish a world government, which is also a manifestation and a reflection of the spiritual crisis that we are in. And that spiritual crisis is a struggle between Satan and Jesus Christ, the eternal Son of God who became man and died for our sins upon the cross. And we are trying to do the very best that we can with the limited resources that we have and our own personal limitations to spread the gospel of our Lord, the truth of his holy church, and devotion to the sacred heart. Our Lord's heart is on fire with love for men. He doesn't want souls to go to hell. And we want to hold up that beacon of Catholic truth to them so that they may see it and they may grab onto the truth and they may uh, avail themselves of the sacraments and of the true holy sacrifice of the Mass. And that in this time of darkness and crisis, they may survive until such time as our Lord intervenes and restores the church uh, in the face of this terrible wickedness in the world. Reverend Fathers, thank you very much.